Ten oak. Come on. I still ain't quite figured all that out. <laughs> we'll see who's going to jump on. Hello, Smith family. Yo, thing. I would figure this out. I meant to uh, have it scheduled and I had to go live. I can't do it without our handy sidekick, that's for sure. Wow, a lot of y'all are popping on quick. Well, welcome, Rebecca. First time on our live stream. Andrea is uh, making her way. I got ahead of the game and hit go live before it's time to go live. She will be here shortly. And like always, get the chat on here. Make sure. Here's my beautiful bride. Hello, hello, hello from Georgia, from Ohio. There's another first timer. Welcome to VW Family Farm. And don't really know what all we're going to talk about today. One question that has been on my mind is our ducks are starting to get old enough, I figured, to be pretty close to laying. And I want to, of course, not raise ducklings again if I can help it because they are messy and a pain. But if y'all know any tricks on like um, getting them to come up at night and I guess we're going to separate some of them out where they'll hatch their own eggs, any advice would help. To get them to what? Uh, where we can train them to come up into that uh, that building oh. to lock them up. So we're gonna, you probably already said this, but we're going to put just a few together. Yes. To keep. So, I mean, are you breeds. wanting them to come up in there separately? Or are you going to separate? No, once they get yeah, in I'm going to have them separated in their own pen. Yeah. But to come up into that building where I can shut them up in there. Cause I think I've, uh, what I remember like Kevin and Sarah and them doing, they keep theirs put up at night and then let them out in the mornings. Mm -hmm. So they'll lay in there. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm. Smith Family Ranch said, we didn't like raising ducks. They smell. So yes. I'll give you that. They we are, like raising but they're the not right up by our house. They're, they mostly stay out on the pond. So they've not stunk this time. So. They did stink in the garage. Raising. Yeah. I don't want to do that again. Good evening. Hey, Vivian. The Max. I was looking while ago. People are in here from everywhere. That's awesome. Indiana, Tennessee, Pennsylvania, New Mexico, Maryland. That's awesome. So hmm. I came, came over came from over Hidden Heights. We loved meeting Hidden Heights. All right, so those of y'all yeah. that have had ducks, did you like eating their eggs or just using them and baking? <clears throat> so they'll pretty much come. If we have food, they're going to come to us. So um, I think they come up that way. And then are you talking about how to get them to come up and separate them, like come into separate pens? Well, I'm going to have, we're going to have to catch them. Yeah. And then we're going to put them in their own pen. And not let them out. And not let them out. But I want to lock them in the building and not lock in the pen outside. Another thing we've got to figure out with the ducks are um, the, some several of the different kinds we got were unsexed. So we don't really know how many males and females we have. So we're going to have to do some research on that too and to I, figure out. I've done a little reading this weekend on it and went out there and looked at the, the pecans. 
And just my guess, like I said, we don't know much about them, but my guess in us figuring them out is it looks like we got three males and one female left. Okay. Five to one ratio. That's terrible. <laughs> I just thought on me. Yeah, but we said. can eat two of them and try that. <laughs> okay. We was really wanting to eat some of them and try it. But I'd also like, if we do like the pecans or if we decided to uh, sell some in the store, I'd like to figure out, I'd like to let them raise their own young and not us. Hey, Christy, first time making it to one of our lives. We've been trying to do this on Tuesdays, but we've just failed several times because it seems work. like Tuesdays are when things go crazy, his work, Hey, all kinds of stuff. So we're trying to do it on Tuesdays when we can. Um, so what is everyone up to? We can talk about whatever y'all want to talk about. Silver can, said they do the ducks quack in monotone. And that's one thing that I was looking at on those pecans is they just a little, little quiet. Yeah. Quack, quack. And then the, the females are really loud. So y'all can ask us anything you want. I can't promise you we'll answer, <laughs> but um, yeah, you can ask anything. We'd love to chat about whatever y'all want to. Um, I want to say, I'm not saying any names because they didn't want any recognition. Um, but all I want to say is a couple of people have been led to send us a donation to help us with what whatever we needed help with here on the farm. Any donation that people are sending us is going towards moving the building, but I don't want to give anyone any credit that didn't want any because, you know, a lot of people want to bless people and not be it told. But I do just publicly want to say thank you very much, uh, very, very much. Um, you have no idea how much that helped us. So I just want to say thank you. And thank you, Kelly. Thank you. She said she's enjoying our channel. That is so nice and so good to hear. So what is everyone up to? Did you have a good Labor Day? We did. We worked here on the farm, but we had um, taken a couple days, actually about, let's see, two days, because I think it was Friday, Ben laid floor for my parents all day long, actually from Thursday night until Friday night, and did a really good job. If you'll do that for your in-laws, you're a very good man. So I want to publicly say that he is just gets the best husband award. And then Saturday and Sunday, we just kind of did what we wanted to do. We actually went to another town, went to a river and swam and hung out and just had a really good time. Ate with some friends and just had a really good time. And then same thing on Sunday. We did not work. We just... Went to church, ate, chilled out, all that. So yesterday, everything had piled up, <laughs> and it was time. So And it was beautiful outside. Yeah. Beautiful, really beautiful, beautiful. And some of you may have been wondering, why am I pushing mowing the yard? I've got to replace the pull, the drive belt on our riding mower, and it wouldn't pull me around very much yesterday. What little it did, um, I got some done, but decided rather than fighting that or tearing that up, I just went to push mowing. So that's got a workout too. Yeah, yeah, I did. It was good for me. So, so anyway, back to the flooring, Lane and Ben actually laid, I don't know how many square feet of flooring in about basically one day. How many boxes was there? 20, sure. 23 or 24. I think they said. We actually, so when we put flooring in our house, we put down laminate flooring and it has since gotten wet in a couple of places. And y'all know what happens when laminate gets wet, it swells. So now there is this awesome stuff I would recommend if you're redoing your floors, vinyl plank. And it looks just like wood, but it can get wet. And so that's what y'all laid. Lane, you worked him into the ground. <laughs> wore this that old man out. out. But this old man felt like, he had been whooped on. Yeah, you felt you were walking like you're about 85. Yeah, up and down and up and down, crawling around. My knees felt like they had blisters. But <clears throat> so, welcome everybody, Cindy Lula. I love that Lula. What she says there. Hello <clears throat> from your vegan friend. 
just because we're not vegan, but you are. We love that we can all interact together. Yeah. And, and we love having you here. Yes. So. Put a vinyl plank down in the whole house two years ago and love it. Yep. Yes. Andrea, I think, would absolutely love it if I figured out some way to rip up all of our <laughs> tile floor and put vinyl plank throughout. But, oh, man, that right there would be I a fixed huge it, job. What? I got it. Okay. Um. Yeah. We're thinking, did you just say we're thinking about doing a, some in here? No, I was saying you would love it if I ripped up all of that tile. Yeah. Because our, our kitchen, living room, washroom, and all that is uh, tile. That's what we put in here when we started. Emily's broke her arm in this house on tile twice. Twice. One of those kids running around the house. Once was running. Once she wasn't even really running, she was just like, she was running a little bit, but she turned a corner and slipped down on it. That was mm. break number two. Break number three had nothing to do with the tile. She was <laughs> riding a bike. I think she was probably about nine by then. She's broke it at four, five, and nine. And then at nine, I think she was riding a bike and decided to mess with her hair at a campground in front of all of our friends and family and bit the dust and Two of which, two of the breaks were on Mother's Day, different Mother's Day, obviously. I was ready to just cancel Mother's Day, not even observe it, because it just didn't work out well for me. And we said we was going to wrap her in bubble wrap the yeah. ne that next year. Yeah. Somebody asked how the cow with the, what we thought was a hernia, how's she doing? I looked at her yesterday and she looked really good. Um, it's healing over. What we're wondering is if uh, the way cows ride each other, something happened during that. Um, she could have been going through the woods and got it caught on a stick. Several yeah. different things, but she is looking a lot better. We actually got a couple cows up late yesterday afternoon and worked them and uh, gave them some shots. We're really having some problems here lately with, uh, I don't know if it's foot rot or something like yeah, that, but their, it's foot rot. Uh, their feet are, are swelling in between their, I call them dew claws or whatever. Toes. Uh, toes, but on the bottom of their foot. So give them a little bit of antibiotics to cut that out. It, it really seemed. We don't do antibiotics unless we're in dire straits. And so a few of them that are just hobbling a little bit, but sometimes they'll get pretty bad. Like it's, it's pitiful. Um, so then we'll figure out something to do. But have you ever watched our Wyoming life? Yes. We love their channel. Thanks for your tips on canning. Vinyl won't stop breakage. Maybe less slippery. Yeah. yeah. It won't stop breakage, but. Um, this tile is literally just concrete. It's just it's hard, well, hard you tile. smack it. It's you're breaking something. I saw the Max ask up here, are y'all planning any winter grass for your cattle or straight hay? We'd love to, but um, we're still, we are really working to get out of debt on the cows right now and almost are there. And then we're trying to buy this building and get it moved. And we had to buy a bull. And I can't remember. There's just a whole list of things. And so seed, grass seed is just, Ben, is, we've actually talked about this several times. He's like, we need to spread grass seed. I'm like, yeah, but that's a whole nother, like, at least, what, $1,000? I don't know. We looked depends into how it. Depends how much I get and depends if what I rent the get. drill. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so. There's only so much money. There's only money. so much money. <laughs> that's so what she that's has what to I've keep been telling him. Is that next year we'll we'll Silver, spread seed? Silver Summit says I have too many male Muscovy ducks. Uh, would we want to butcher one? We would try it. We would try it. Uh, All born in spring. Yeah, you'll bring it with the turkeys, unless he has to butcher. Yeah, we're actually ordering um, the wax duck wax mm -hmm. right now because I didn't realize that. These were going to, I mean, I knew they were going to be harder to pluck than chickens, but I guess in the past we've skint ducks. Like we don't even mess with trying to pluck the feathers. We just skin them. Mm -hmm. We've like had wild ducks or right. whatever. And usually brush but them out. We're going to try doing that. And so it's really interesting that how this is going to work. We're going to video it all. So we're going to, it's a whole process, but I'll just shorten it down. You dip them 
in one of the steps in boiling water that has wax in it, right? Mm -hmm. And then that coats on them and then that pulls off and pulls the little uh, pin feathers yeah. out. I'm, I think it sounds pretty cool. Meanwhile, I asked, do you ever harvest your tilapia? I don't recall seeing a video about that. Andrew has probably been on my can a little bit about that here <laughs> yeah. lately because we've been feeding them for over a year. We do have some ready, and funny you say that, as I was going to come in this afternoon and say, hey, we'll run out there and catch some and have them for supper, but she's already got supper cooked. So when I do that, we will make a video yes. on that. And um, That is coming soon because we need to. I saw the Honeystead. I saw y'all had your first day of school, so I hope that went well. Looked like the kids were at home, so maybe you're doing online or something. Um, Let's Max. see. The they Max tear said, the grass out when they eat. Mr. Chell P said that. Um, the Max asked, are, are we running registered bulls or commercial? We This time, we've always run commercial, and this one is still a commercial bull. Um, he was not registered. He was full blood and could have been registered, but the guy didn't ever do it. So The and South I'm, Pole one. Yeah, the South Pole one, and I'm fine with that. I do want to get a registered South Pole, and I really want to get, like, hmm. I'm shooting for 10, but I'll settle with five. Bulls? No. Well, yeah, oh. I mean, that would be nice too, but no, registered um, South Pole heifers. Yeah. Okay. Michelle said they tear the grass out when they eat. She's asking that. Um, well, the reason to sow grass seed is for like winter grazing. And so we don't have very many like cool weather grasses here. So that's why we were going to sow it. Um, they don't tear it out. Now, some grasses like we have Johnson grass right now and we have a trusted mentor that has told us that that is really good grazing. It's really good hay. But if we let the cows overgraze it, they will eventually just wipe it out. So mm -hmm. some of them, yes, they can graze and then just wipe out. Um, and then but a lot of them, they just graze and graze them down. So we're not sowing it because we had it and they grazed it out. We're sowing it because we don't have it. Hope that helps. Gossmania said we had, a, <clears throat> wish we had enough property to have a good bit of cattle, just only maybe two or three. I can tell you it's a lot less of a headache dealing with just uh, a handful of them. It didn't seem like we ever really had much trouble when we had just a handful. But no. once we went, what I call big, big for us, you know, it started seeming like headache after headache. Something's always going on with them. That's why y'all see a lot of videos on cattle. Just always something. It's always something. But we love it. Silver Summit said, never tried wax. If they're fully feathered in white ducks, the plucking will be easiest. White colored ducks' pen feathers blend in when plucked and don't look as bad as dark colored pen feathers. Hmm. Okay, they're saying they can only see half my face. I can't tell because there's a chat in front of it. So I don't know if that's better. Any experience with Highlands? I saw someone else ask about Highlands. I don't think Highlands are um, for the South. I'm not sure. Do you know about Highland cattle? Uh, there's one guy down in Searcy that's got a few, but no. What's mainly uh, what's mainly raised around here are Angus cattle. Uh, there are some Charlays and a few beef masters, but what we've decided we're going to start, you know, going towards is the uh, the south poles and uh, they were actually i did a video on it but they were actually bred for the south i mean yeah. they're bred for heat they're bred to not have any shade um now we won't do that we have some shade and i like to let them get some shade but that's what they're bred for is to graze on grass to grow out and be able to be a nice thick beefy cow on grass because you can put any cow on grass but they're not all going to grow out well on grass. So that's what we are wanting to do um, because we're raising beef. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyway, Vivian asked somewhere up there okay, about yes. how much do you like chickens to weigh once you butcher them? I like them to be cleaned, um, processed and still weigh at least five pounds. We've had some in the past that weigh three or four and that's just a little small. Um, that one year, we've had some way like six seven. or seven. Yeah, seven huge. is more turkey size, and it's it's hard to get in a bag, and it's a little big for the cooking pot, but it's still a lot of good meat. 
and it was still tender. So mm -hmm. I would say at least five. Um, if it's bigger, the better for me. Mm, somebody said, uh, pet farmer, they show you all and say the temperature of the water also. Uh, Do you think they taste better small, Vivian said? I don't. No. I don't now, you can, you can let them get too big. Yeah. And they're going to get tough. Well, and that more comes from if you don't feed them enough. And so you drag out their growing over a lot more weeks. If you feed them and they get big, still in a reasonable number of weeks, they're tender. How is the new bull? Charla asked. He is doing great. Uh, I, don't guess, I guess you've got more comfortable around him. Yeah, he's good. I wouldn't fully trust him. He's not a puppy dog or anything. And Lane is just not afraid of anything. In fact, sometimes Ben has to tell him, he has to tell me to be brave and he has to tell Lane to be a little more cautious because yeah. he just gets right out there and just does and doesn't, he's not, just not afraid. And he stared him down a couple times. Yeah. Back from my bull riding days, I remember how fast them things can be. So uh, you always gotta, always gotta be cautious around them. Doing redneck things said, check out Greg Judy's channel for tips on pastures. We are big Greg Judy fans. Yep. That is, that's where we've watched and got a lot of inspiration. And um, before we ever started, yeah, he's just he's awesome on how he talks about. He was pretty much broke, and um, just broke. I don't know how else to say it. And then he took a chance on this farming and um, electric fencing and all that, and just he's been very successful. Y'all know, but so yeah, he's pretty inspiring. Prairie Girl and Cowboy, how are y'all doing? Hope you're doing well with all the fires and everything. It's wild, all these fires. You can get that one. Asking you a question. I'm understanding. Can the I have a question. We have straw grass. Is it fine for a cow to eat? We have tons, but if a cow can eat it for us, we will leave it up for now. Um, as far if as it's straw, like um, if it's like sage grass, they're probably just not gonna. Um, I don't like know what if it's like straw not, where it's been cut. Like they still don't eat that well. They might eat that a little better than mm -hmm. like sage grass or something, but. Oh, I just now got to do I'm way, way back here. They said, yeah, we're getting all their smoke. I bet you can smell smoke from many miles away. What is a good all-purpose bird for meat and eggs? As far as chickens or ducks? Because yeah. I'd say chickens, I'd say Buff Orphingtons. That's your favorite. They're, well, they're just, I picked one up that had gotten out the other day. And it was heavy and meaty, but they lay like crazy. They lay real pretty, like light brownish, pinkish, pinkish. eggs yeah. and real pretty consistently. So that's my dual purpose go to. We have a flock of those simply because if we ever can't get Cornish crosses, we'll just raise our own. We haven't to this point because we can still get them and then we can raise those out in no time. But all of our things here are like on a backup plan that if need be, we can be self-sufficient. And yeah. I hate that word self-sufficient because it's yeah. not self. I mean, it takes a whole community. It takes the Lord. It takes um, lots of things happening. We, we can't do it all by ourselves. But you know what I mean? Living Miracle says, and funny how when you were young, you were never afraid. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Because I used to not be scared of heights. Now, when we was uh, out riding with our friends, we walked up on the bluff overlooking the river, and Lane got really, really close to the edge of it. Oh, my stomach felt like it was going to go through my throat. Because <clears throat> now I'm scared of heights. We're used to. I was called a monkey. And I'm scared of a lot of things. Hmm. <laughs> Thirty thousand acres burned.
Andrew and the kids both dream animal for a long time was a horse until we got one. And then it's like the new wears off and the pain of having to go saddle it. But we're kind of wishing we had. Yeah, I still love horses. Lane wants one really bad to work cows on. But yeah, I just, I need to be able to trust that it's not going to like buck me off. I think my animal problems go back to, I was attacked by a dog when I was young. And so I just really have a hard time trusting animals. Once I do, I'm fine, but it's just, it's tough for me. And so horses fall into that category. Hey, Stivers. Looks like y'all had a fun weekend. Miss y'all. Update on the store getting moved. So we are just in limbo. We're still waiting on um, somebody to give us somebody message. to go look at it. I actually called another person today. Yeah. Did it. <clears throat> on the moving part, it's just not looking near as possible or likely as what I thought it would be. I, I thought, well, that size building, about anybody can move it. But man, I actually uh, drove by uh, shed movers the other day. And there was two 18 wheelers parked at a place where they was moving some sheds. I turned around, you know me, I'll go back and ask anybody anything. So I asked him if they could move it. He kind of laughed at me and just said, if they don't have runners under it, it's not going to be stout enough for them to move with their setup. So I don't know. Do we have any experience with colored egg layers? Well, we've got a few out there. Uh, they just started laying and they're small. That's how they normally will start out on new birds is they're going to be small. What was that called? They call them fairy eggs. They're fairy little. Egg, yeah. They're cute. Um, the ones we've been getting have yolks in them. Sometimes they don't have a yolk. Sometimes they're really small. But the ones we've been getting are, they're just, they're good. They're just small. See you doing redneck things. Um, what was the other part of that question? Uh, I remember I scrolled on down. Smith Family Ranch said, we raised Brahma chickens for meat and were not impressed. Really? Well, that's good to know. Yep. We have not raised those. Um, Has anybody raised the Jersey Giants? Because that's something I was looking at then. <clears throat> Yeah, we've kind of had like some backup plans, uh, like the Buff Orpingtons. And um, that's one reason we raise, we could get piglets right now. Um, they're available and we could just get any old piglets and raise them. And it'd still be good meat. I mean, home raised pork is good no matter what breed it is. Some are better. Um, that's why we like what we like. And I know Kaylee over at the Honeystead, she has her favorite. And, um, but part of it is our, our backup plan that we always want to be able to have piglets. And so that's why we raise a boar and two sows. Um, we started out with a boar and three sows that's a and lot of that was a lot of piglets and, and we lost the place to go with them and all that. So we scaled back to one and we quickly found out that was a bad idea too. One is just, well, the story is she had piglets one time in the summer and then went and laid down and died. Mm -hmm. And so we had a whole bunch of piglets and no mama. And then there was our whole pork operation. And so that's when now we have two. And um, so that's kind of where we are with things. We like to be able to provide them for ourselves and not depend on that. We're going to be able to find them because we never know if we are. So Gossmania, I have blue wine dots. They're a tad bigger than my Orpingtons. So I don't know if those are a dual purpose or not. I bet they could be. I mean, any chicken could be. But homegrown wife asked, what breed do you like? Are you referring to the chickens or the pigs? I didn't. We like um, old spots. That's what we raise is um, Gloucestershire old spots. Gloucestershire. Um, and then, so Honey said, okay, they're trying something new. Three-quarter Berkshire, a quarter Mangalitsa. So I know they've raised Mangalitsas for a while now. Um, I'll be interested to see how that goes. We have we know people that really like Berkshires, too. Um, so 
had a little pasture pigs. Yeah. Now that's what Kevin and Sarah have. Mm -hmm. And they did a lot of research and decided that's what they wanted. So, um, Allison says, grandfather always said to finish the pig on peaches. we okay. sweeten the meat. Yes. I want to just say the moderators are doing a great job. Really great job. <clears throat> Goss Mania, the Honeystead, the Max, Smith Family Ranch. On the Stivers. pigs. Uh, homegrown wife. We have tried, of course, the Yorkshires. Hated them because of what they do to your land. Um, there, There is a place for them. Like if we get uh, get it set up and want to clear off some land in the back that's really grown up, get them to uproot everything, I could see that. But putting them out on pasture, uh, that's what we was really going for is a pasture hog. And that's why the old spots absolutely love them. Very little rooting. Uh, we have thrown it out there because we have said before, no rooting or whatever, because our big pigs really don't. But... When we get the uh, the little ones grown up and they turn in like teenagers, it's like they go through a teenage spell of just wanting to tear everything up. They'll they'll root some, but they're still nothing comparable to like a Yorkshire. Now there was see you the, even the sparrow. What was that other one? The large blacks. Uh, they're kind of like that, uh, like the old spots. They're not going to root a whole lot. They're another heritage breed, yes. but we had uh, trouble with them getting down in their back end. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, like in the hip and spine area, we just did not have good luck with the large black, but honey said they said they finish on acorns. Homegrown wife said we finish on apples. Um, that's interesting. Hey, Susan Baker. Silver Summit's got to go lock the ducks and birds up. Homegrown wife said, I've been thinking about old spots. We love them. They're really docile is one reason we love them. They're real lardy. Their meat is. So I get a lot of lard, which is what I use to, I cook with it and I make uh, soap with it. And it just puts a lot of marbling in the meat. It's and they're just, really long. Yeah. You get a lot more pork chops. Yeah. You get a lot more bacon. They're not as big in the back end, like some of the like show pigs you see that have the really big rear end. They're not like that, uh, but we get a lot of meat off of them. And we have them uh, grown out in eight months. Mm -hmm. So from birth to eight months, they're grown out. And the first two months, they're on their mom. So then we only have to really raise them for six months. So... Anyway, what do y'all have growing in your gardens right now? We are, I saw all that cabbage we planted is gone. In, the, in the greenhouse? No, in the ground. Really? Yeah, because we, it was still really hot when we got it out of the greenhouse and planted it. And it didn't make it. And it hadn't rained in a while. So watering it, just things just don't do well as well on watering as it does on rain. That's just, Allison says she's growing weeds and Southern Bless has grown half dead plants. Well, now that That's the, a, how it's going here too. Now that the sun's going down, it's going on right after I get off the live and eat supper, I'm going hunting. Hunting? Mm-hmm. Tomato worm. Oh yeah. We woke up to 40 degrees. Oh, that sounds amazing. I saw posting with snow. Yeah. Up there in um, Wyoming, it's snowing like mm. crazy. That yes. sounds amazing. I wish I was in Wyoming. It was 90 here today. For my FFA projects in the early 70s, I raised Duroc, Chester White, and New Hampshire. That's what his grandpa had a mm -hmm. um, pig farm in the 70s, probably. 60s, 70s. He like raised 60s. show pigs for kids oh, and 60s. stuff for like the market. Marie Lapp brought in a 50 pound watermelon. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Those are uh, far and few between for us. That Country Homestead here. Preachers shelling Red Ripper peas. That sounds good. Just so, had to replant the broccoli. Groundhogs. 
Honey said, said tomatoes are still going strong. Ours are doing okay. We Like Ben said, he's got to go hunt some hornworms. They're going a little crazy. Have y'all ever done that, taking the black light out and hunted the, hunted the uh, tomato worms? I can't. It's just crazy how they glow. Yeah. And, I mean, you can find little bitty, bitty Ooh. hornworms. Vivian's making cowboy candy for the first time tomorrow. Emily is obsessed with that stuff. She mm -hmm. puts it in and on everything. That's <laughs> missing. It wasn't fall burden. Yeah. Stiver said it was 90 here in Kentucky, too. The weather's been nuts. It's hot here. Still hot, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It looks like it was, it was blistering, it felt like today. Yeah. And Becky said, I'm new to your channel and just wanted to say that I really love your family operation. I love how y'all work together and tackle each day together. So nice to watch. Oh, thank I'm, you. I'm going to tell you, these, these three, her and the two kids, they they amaze me sometimes with all they accomplish while I'm working. Well, um, thank you. And they work well together. Okay. NM Dispatch Lady said they're calling for 27 tonight and high 50 tomorrow. 8 to 20 inches of snow on the New Mexico-Colorado border possible. <gasps> what? Colorado just sounds so nice yes. right now. We love Colorado. And Wyoming. And Montana. Thank you, Daniel Abrams. Yeah, somebody said the second crop of green beans is coming and the late squash. Y'all was... Snapping green beans yeah, when I walked in today. Six gallons. Ooh, Ooh. hundreds of muskinos. That sounds amazing. Yeah, we got some from our neighbor. They've got hundreds of thousands going. Tame muskinos. Yeah, the big ones. And they've got the, um, I think they call them blush. They've got the purple, but they've got the like ones. She might have even called them champagne color. Yeah. I don't know what they are. They're good. Feels like 36. That's getting pretty cold. Smith family, y'all are like us. They're 86 and humid. <laughs> Country homestead preacher said the kids love hunting for hornworms with the light. That's awesome. Keep them doing it <laughs> as long it's as they love a, it. <laughs> yeah. It amazes me what animals won't eat it around here. Yeah. I've tried feeding it to the tilapia, and they don't really mess with it. I've tried feeding it to the duck. So they'll fight over it and just, but if you just give it to one, they're not really interested. Mm -mm. Chickens, sometimes not really. Thank you. I think it, I'm going to try to say this. Ian Rosales said, sending love from the Philippines. Thank you very much. Vivian says it's cold. That sounds nice. Ooh. Can I empty in a tote all the soil that's in my planters to use next spring? My dad did that. Uh, he didn't no. empty it in a tote. He just reused it. And his stuff has not grown well. It's not um, really recommended. I would, I would say, because we like to try to be frugal. If you're going to try it, just um, spruce it up at least with some fresh. Don't just use old. That's what he did. And he said he's not going to do that again. Usually what I do is I'll take that and dump it into the garden or one of the raised beds or something like that. And uh, put that in there and then put new in pots. It does get expensive, though. But try the trick of going and buying ripped bags. You can get yes. it a lot cheaper. Marie said tomatoes, peppers come in. Fall green beans started. Cantaloupe and squash, potatoes and sweet potatoes. Hopefully some corn. That's awesome. All right. Jackie is asking, what is cowboy candy? I hear it on a lot of channels. Okay. It's cowboy amazing. candy is, it is like. I think typically it's made out of jalapenos and they are like chopped up really good, like almost blended. I guess you'd say you can chop it real fine. If you want to chop, you mix it with um, sugar or sweetener of some sort. And it's more like a um, sweet, it's hot sweet. Sweet, relish, sweet. I guess you'd say, but we cannot, some of us can't take the super hot. So I've even made it with mild peppers and um, it's just thing. delicious. The It's so delicious to put it on top of cream cheese and eat it. Pepper jelly. Emily puts it in tuna. Candy. She yeah. likes it in anything. Yeah, I like that. So. All right, there's a few B questions. One okay. of them from the max. Pulling, asking if I'm pulling fall honey. 
I don't think I'm going to this year. We started out real strong on uh, the honey flow, and then it just like dearth hit, and we had really nothing around here. I checked some of my hives uh, a week ago, maybe a week and a half ago, and they're light. They are very light. Some of my nukes that uh, were swarms that we were building up, I mean, they had a little to none. So I got into my sugar stash, and I ended up feeding out roughly 125, 150 pounds of sugar syrup. And now the, the goldenrod has started blooming. I know y'all said y'all like the goldenrod. Man, just... I don't know, walking by the hives and smelling what I call smells like a stinky sock. I just don't know if I'm going to do that. I may just leave them with it. Uh, I'd rather them pull through the winter. I don't need the honey. And I don't know if it's our dry, hot weather here or what it is, but everyone around here says goldenrod makes bitter honey. Mm -hmm. And we've actually had some of it where it's like, it just leaves a weird not taste. Good. Yeah. So I think it probably does in some places. But I think it doesn't here. I didn't like it when how that one. Uh, the honeystead said, "How are the bees doing?" So that was the next question. During that inspection of all of them, they all look. I mean, the bees look good. They still had pretty good brooding larvae. Not they're not filling up the the frames with them yet. Uh, I guess because of the low flow. But uh, one of my nukes it died, and when I went in there, I seen no bees coming in and out. When I popped the top. Of course, wax moth, larva, mess, nastiness. So I took it straight and threw it right in the deep freeze. And now when I get time, it's time to clean all that up. That's what I hate. It just aggravates me to death is when I lose one and have to clean up the mess because all that beautiful comb is right. But that is one reason I, reason I do love the plastic frames. So if they only mess up, or plastic foundation, I should say, if they only mess up one, say, half or quarter of it, you can scrape just that section off and not lose the whole thing. Hey, Pinky. Glad you could join us. Um, so how is Miracle doing? She's doing awesome, and she's still a good milker. She knows she's the favorite, but she's sweet. She's actually sweet. It? No, she actually gets pushed around a little bit by Marvel. Marvel cows just have a pecking order. And it doesn't matter what combination of them I put up here in the milk pen and put the rest out. They figure out a pecking order for that little group that's in there. And whoever's first is first every day to come in because they won't let anyone else come in first. They're hilarious, really. But Miracle is not at the top. Um, but, yeah, she's my favorite. The Max says they don't they like it to cook with. Yeah. The fall honey. Hidden Heights lost two hives. He had to burn them. Oof, yeah. Do you have flowers that influence your flavors, such as lavender when they're healthy? Uh, we haven't so much had lavender, but yes, like what they're feeding on definitely influences the flavor. Like clover oh, honey. That clover honey, that's um, that is the bomb. Yeah. Bomb.com diggity. Um and you can taste it. Uh, I have taken hives down and put them on soybean fields. Uh, that's pretty long haul from here. I don't really like doing it because it can you can mess up your uh, hives. You can lose your queen smusher in transport. See you, Kaylee. Uh, but even even that, it's a darker honey, but it, it still tastes real good. <clears throat> are we going to breed Miracle? Yes, we are. Hopefully she's bred. Yeah, I think she's probably bred now. Um she should be good. I mean, that just, it's sad, but that does happen that um, first time heifers have trouble. And so I don't expect, it doesn't mean she'll have trouble again. I will be watching her real close. Of course, she's right up here with me up every day. Um, the part that hurt her so bad was that it happened during the night. And then it was the next morning before we found her. And that is just, just sadly that happens sometimes because you can't sit up all night, every night waiting. I mean, you can, if you know, you've got a situation coming, but we didn't. 
No. And um, and that's one of that's partially our fault for we don't keep good records on when. I guess one of them we think got bred. We don't know exactly when every cow we have yeah. is bred. There's no way we, we know could. when they should be getting close. And when we do, that's one of the Lane's daily chores is to drive around and check. Um, for he knows what to look for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, homegrown rice says miss having bees, but I just don't have the time and wanted to focus on other parts of the farm first. Been there. Uh, when I first started in bees, it was like what weekly. Yes, Every week day. I was going through there. Yeah. And I would stress. I'd see a lot of bees flying out, just like any new <laughs> bee sleep. Oh, I did. Yeah. And uh, he loved them. Not knowing, not doing enough research is part of my problem. Um, but you did a lot of research, though. But well, just it, things come up with them that yeah. you have to learn through it. And thankfully, you had a, a mentor that you could call anytime. Mm -hmm. He would talk to you for hours about bees. And so you learned a lot that way. I did. But just going through the experiences of it, knowing that, all right, looking in there, I don't have a mated queen. There's no eggs, no larva, whatever. There is a possibility of that uh, virgin queen being out on a mating flight or her being so small, you just couldn't see her. Uh, there's a lot of things to learn. But now I don't have the mentality as one of my friends had that all right, I'm just going to put the bees in the box and let them be bees. Uh, I think you still have to stay on top of them or you're going to lose highs and then the wax moths are going to come in and demolish it or which I don't have the problem anymore. I will tell you from my Denise. experience with bees is I've had them in full shade. I've had them in partial shade. I've had them in full sun. Um, as far as hive beetles, full sun has worked amazing. I have very, very, very few hive beetles in all my hives having them out in full sun now. Vivian said she buys from a place that days it is totally from land in Canada that the bees can't travel to any fields that have sprays. Do you think that matters? I would personally think that's good. Um, that's why they say there's no, there is no organic honey because they can't control where the bees go. But I mean, if they're, you know, where they really can't get to any more land that would have sprays, I would think that that would make a difference just for me personally. Um, I think that would be very healthy, but um, black oak is tiny is great, but not from the chestnut tree blossoms. That's interesting. The Max said, when you expose your cows and take the bull out, if one isn't bred, do you sell it, late breeder, or wait till next season? Well, we went to a conference back in the spring, and uh, really, in ideal conditions, when you put your bull in, if you have a bull for like every 20 or 25 cows or whatever ratio you choose to do, you should, be able to, you should be able to put them in for 42 days and get every one of those cows bred. And if not, the big successful operations on grass fed and rotational grazing, they are not a cow they want to keep if they did not get bred in 42 days. So what they what they told us at the conference was wait and preg check a few months down the road. And if they're not bred, then you can put them in a pen by themselves and get them bred so that you can sell them, yeah, but you bread. don't keep them. Yeah. And so we've not got to that point because we don't want to sell right now. We want things eating grass. And so we'll just do whatever it takes to get them bred. And so um, anyway, big roundabout answer there to but say we do have 42 some, days they should be bred. We do have some that going by the books. We don't preg check. We need to. That's just another expanse or learning curve that we haven't done yet. Yeah, I could probably do it, um, but it would it would take a while. Cindy said, how's the new bull doing? He's doing good. He's settled in. He's, he's fairly friendly. Allison said, wish I had a camera. My cat is totally sitting on my lap watching your live. <laughs> Let's say something to the cat. What's the cat's name? Call and check with your heavy wrecker or tractor trailer service. If they have land all service, they probably can move your building. Thank you very much, Busy Bee. 
Yes, Southern Blessed has a new grandbaby. Cutie pie. Y'all are blessed over there, those grandbabies. I've seen a couple of people say <clears throat> Jake over at White House on the Hill had a had a burn a hive and then had a... Oh, uh, he had to burn one or was that Hidden Heights? Uh, it says White House on the Hill. And they had a bad hive too that he had had to be burned. And oh, they I added didn't see a that. new one and a new queen because the current queen was mean. That is something I have done before. I hate to do it, and I'm going to do it the next time I go through my hives. One of the swarms I caught from down where I work, I popped the top on it three different times and have not been able to go through it because as soon as I pop the top, there's like 30, 50, whatever bees right in my face just trying. I mean, None of my other hives act like that. I saw a little Facebook video of him getting attacked. I turned it off. I couldn't watch it because we had our own experience with that. What a year ago mm -hmm. here where our hives fell over and um, cause we had a big flooding rain and just the, the stand fell. And then Ben went to pick them up. I was filming just thinking we were going to film getting our hives stood back up, had no idea what was fixing to take place. One fell apart and he had on a veil, but he didn't have the whole suit on and it stung him really bad all over his neck. And it was a dire situation. It was stressful. It was terrible. I never want to experience it again. It scared me half to death. And so I couldn't even watch his video of it happening to him. His wife was in the background and she was calm. And I heard her say, should I get the smoker? And I was like, girl, you are you have got it way more together than me because <laughs> I was flipping my lid. And um, it was just, it was awful. And things can just happen so fast. And it was very scary. So that is just uh, respect the bees. Yeah. But that is one thing that I, I'm going to, it's either burn them. And I hate to do that. Or if you requeen them, you can, uh, you can possibly save them. I'm going to pop the top on them. I'm going to really gear it up um, my full suit, um, not my rubber gloves, because the other day they was hitting my rubber gloves. I mean, you could feel them hitting hard. So they're going to be really aggressive. And one word of caution is um, you might not be allergic to bees, but just be aware. I'm not trying to scare you, but just be aware, because after that, we've become friends with our state bee inspector, and he said just – don't mess around with it. That's why at least we're something on your head and neck because um, anyone who's even not allergic gets stung a certain amount of times on the head and neck area. It's bad. He it can said, be real bad. He said that day when we was talking to him, anything above the shoulders, if you take 20 to above the shoulders, that can be, can be fatal. Uh, and so then we got Ben inside and gave him, um, Benadryl really quickly and it scares me now looking back on it because we were like okay we're good he's had the Benadryl he's feeling good all that but he even told us you know during the middle of the night that could have it could have come back and got mm -hmm. way worse because when that Benadryl wears off we didn't even think about that so there's just a lot to think about okay this kitty's name is Max and I just seen the picture you did yes Oh, man. Allison, can I show that picture? <laughs> that is too I wish funny. I could pet Max. Meow, meow, Max. <laughs> <laughs> I love cats. I love dogs, too. Yeah, she said you can show it. Let's see. He's watching the live. Hey, Max. Wish I could pet you, Max. And if y'all are wondering how I got that picture so quick, Allison came down for our first shindig. She drove, what was it, Allison? 20, 23 hours or something. I thought it was 27, something like that. All the way from New York. And, Long Island. And we had her come over and visit. She was amazing company. We were we, just we exchanged, instant friends. Yes. Loved it. Had a blasting. Yeah, 27 hours. Cannot wow. wait till the next time. Yeah. Instant friendship. That was fun. Hey, Scott. Nice to have you. So I think 
push the plane. I think we are going to hop off here a little bit early. Ben's got to go horn hunting, hornworm hunting. It is dark. And um, so we'll, we're going to end about seven minutes early. Um, so we will see you guys, I guess, tomorrow and maybe next Tuesday. Thank all the moderators. Yes, all the moderators. Some of them are not still on here. Work, but work, work, work for tonight. Pinky, Southern Blessed, Goss Mania. Um, Southern Blessed, I may be repeating myself. The Max, y'all check out all these channels. The Stivers were on here. Um, the Honeystead was on here. I don't know if I said Goss Mania, but definitely them. They've been with us the whole time. So check them out. They have all have great channels. And we will see you guys tomorrow. And I'm about to hit end if I can find it. Oh, you're going to do it tonight. So we love all of you. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you later. God bless. I'm still on here, ain't I? Uh-huh.